Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. We're looking at the nth term in sigma notation. I thought I might throw this one in before I really deal with the sequences section um, in more detail. Um, just on the last lesson, I just introduced to you the ideas and concepts of series and sequences, um, mainly the, the three S's, okay? Hopefully you can remember those now. Um, the first one was a set, okay, which is a collection of objects or terms. The second one was the sequences, which was the uh, um, ordered set um, or an ordered collection of terms or a collection of ordered terms. And then we have our series, which was our sum of sequences. That was a basic sort of understanding stuff that I got through to you last lesson. Um, I mentioned to you a little bit about uh, our sequences in terms of things like, I think I used yesterday the, the 5, uh, 7, and 9 ellipsis. And then I showed you how to briefly write a formula. Okay, Hopefully you remembered that because it goes up by 2, we might call this the difference of 2. That was also the same as the gradient, that constant amount. So we say the 2n. And then often we test it. The first, second, third term, so I should probably put T3, T2, and T1 if I'm being uh, mathematically correct. Um, so 2 times 1 is 2, but I need it, I need 5. So we plus 3, and then we can check it. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 3 is 7, works out. So what I would like you to do, um, I'm just going to uh, flash over to the next page. And I want you to pause this and have a crack. I want you to find the next three terms and then the 100th term using the sort of the, the same progression I showed you the last time. Okay, how did you go? So first of all, the next three terms, well, we can see we're adding three to each uh, term. So adding three, we get 17, we get 20, we get 23. This enables us to find uh, the nice equation. So the gradient is 3, so 3n, and I can test it for the first term. So 3 times 1 is 3, but I'm missing 5. I can test it for the second one. 3, 2 is a 6, but I'm missing 5. So add that to it, I get 11. We're correct. So now to find the 100th term, we get 3 times 100 is 300. We get 305. Okay, perfect. Um, the next one, we have 16, 14, 12. So each time, I'm taking two away. So the next three numbers will be 10, 8, and 6. Then if I want to come up with a nice little formula, we can say this time the gradient is negative 2n. Okay, now I'm going to test it. Minus 2 times 1 is minus 2, but I've got 16, so I must add on to that 18. I'm going to test it for the next one. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. 18 minus 4 is 14. That works out correctly. So for the 100th term there, I've got negative 200. I might just write this one out. Plus 18, which is going to give me an answer of, let's say, negative, what's that? Uh, 182, I believe. Okay. There we go. That's a hundredth term. And then for the last one, we're taking off seven this time. So very similar. Um, we're going to take off seven to get uh, what's that going to be? Fourteen and seven and zero. Okay. And we can have the uh, formula t n equals negative seven n. Uh, if I test it for the first one, negative seven times one is negative seven. So I'm going to need to add on to that. Uh, what's that? Forty four. It's a big one. So T100, again, not a bad idea to double check it. Um, negative 7 times 2 is negative 14. That makes 30. That's correct. So we get negative 700 plus 44. So that will all equal negative 656, I think. I think that's correct. Um, all righty. That's pretty much it for that part of it. Um, what about the next question? Okay, so find the value of n that gives the first negative term of the series tn equals 2n minus 300. Well, if this was a negative number, right, then, hold on, I'm just going to make that into positive, apologies, 
Uh, I just realized that when I was looking at the question to write down that it, uh, it said positive and that wasn't going to work because if I sub in 1 for my first term we're going to get a negative number just off, off the bat so we don't really want that okay so I'm going to rewrite so the first positive term okay um, so we want this to be a positive number right so I've just mentioned that if I subbed in 1 we get a negative number what we want we want this whole thing to be greater than 0 we want it to be positive um, in other words we want the answer to be a positive integer okay so let's have a quick look if I can solve this I'm going to plus a 300 to get that we get n is greater than 150 okay so it says find the value of n that gives the first positive integer n is greater than 150 now I've just mentioned that n has to be a positive integer right um, we want it can't have it can't be 0 because that's not a positive integer um, so we want to have n is equal to 151 because that will give me the first positive number. I'm guessing if I put 150 in there, I'm going to get zero, which I do. We want it to be a positive number. Okay. Um, all right. So that's pretty much like the basic, basic, basic stuff um, before we actually get into the next stage uh, of the proper formulas um, and the sequences. Um, the other thing I want to mention before I do move on, I want to um, talk about the sigma. Okay, um, you will see that in the textbook. I know it comes up quite early, and this I guess starts to talk about the series. We just spoke about sequences very basically, of course. We've already mentioned that series is the sum of a sequence, right? Okay, so um, I think we used yesterday that example. What was it? Uh, five plus seven plus nine. Now it needs to be a finite one of course in this particular instance if I'm going to find the actual sum of this and certainly that one you just say well 5 plus 7 is 12, 12 plus uh, 9 is going to be 21 okay nice and easy but what they use they use this symbol that means the sum of okay you might remember this in Excel it looks like that this is referred to as Sigma and what they'll do, they'll get this question here, I guess, and find the sum of this this in, uh, this finite uh, series, and they will translate it into sigma notation. All right. And what they'll do, they'll give you a starting point. Now, this is for us is our t1, our t2, and our t3, right? So what they'll say, they'll say when n equals one, they want you to find the sum of the formula and they'll give you the formula now we already know this formula to be um, what was it 2n plus 3 okay and then they'll give you the term that they want you to add up to so if I was to rewrite um, this particular question in sigma notation that's what it would look like so it tells me that if I do this I've got 2 times 1 plus 3 plus 2 times 2 plus 3 plus and then uh, 2 times 3 plus 3. And then often um, will be like that. So you can see that I've started at 1, and I've got to the second and the third term, and that's the actual function. Okay, so that's 2 plus 3 is 5, 4 plus 3 is 7, uh, 6 plus 3 is 9, which will equal that 21. Um, and they can give you lots of funky ones. Now, I haven't really mentioned what type of sequence that particular thing is because we know it's linear. You might not have a linear one, okay? Um, we refer to this one as an arithmetic, and this is what we'll be doing next, uh, next lesson, an arithmetic sequence. It's linear. But sometimes you might have ones that are like squares or cubes, and that's what we refer to as a geometric okay geometric sequence so for example they might give you something that's going to look like this um, it might say like this and it might be x squared n equals 3 and they might put 5 up here so what this now means okay is that we're starting at the third term so 3 squared and then going up to the fifth term, so 4 squared and 5 squared. And now we can say we've got 9 
plus 16, which is 25, plus 25 equals 50, and then we've got our numbers added up. Okay, it's just a different way of writing a sequence. Okay, um, they could have written the sequence like this. Um, 9 plus 16 plus 25 etc however what this is saying is it's not the first part of the sequence it's from the third to the fifth okay again that is called sigma notation um, it's not particularly too challenging sigma notation except when you get lots of terms like for example we might say we have 3 to 50 okay that my friends is quite challenging and we'll need to have a bit more information on geometric um, as opposed from just doing it by hand because there's a much quicker way we can do this with formulas okay look guys I hope that gave you a little bit of int introduction once again um, to our sequences and to our series again that's just a very basic understanding uh, we'll be getting into nitty-gritty of arithmetic series and also our geometric series over the next three or four lessons. Uh, again, just for my class, uh, I'm pretty sure that this is uh, aimed at exercises 7.2 um, and 7.3. So it's uh, probably worth you guys having a look at that. Have a good day.